and one. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. All right. So, today we are going to be discussing A Comb of Wishes by Lisa Stringfellow. Stringfellow? Stringfellow. <laughs> I, I, for some reason, I thought in my head, Strongfellow. <laughs> but it's Stringfellow. So, I have to say um, thank you again to the publisher for giving me um, an arc of this book. It does, it is released. February 2nd, 2022, or it will be released February 2nd, 2022. Um, and I definitely think you should put this on your reading list. It's a middle grade, um, debut novel. And you know what? Hey, she lives in Boston. Sorry. I'm a Bostonian at heart. Um, it's a middle grade debut, but it doesn't feel like... A debut novel. So I'm going to read this little bit right here. Set against the backdrop of Caribbean culture and folklore, Lisa Stringfellow's mesmerizing middle grade debut tells a story of impossible wishes and magic based on the deepest love. It's an honestly amazing story because it follows um, Keila and she lives in, you know, on the island of St. Rita and you know, she has, she's just lost her mother. She has just lost her mother and she's still really broken up about it because the last words she said to her mother were, I hate you. Um, and I think that that's something that even I know I don't want my last words to my mother and we have, we have our share of problems. Um, we're Mexican women. Of course we do. It's my left Um, <laughs> I don't want my last words to her to ever be words of anger and hatred. Um, you know, even though we're kind of in an argument right now, but <laughs> it is what it is what it is. Um, and I definitely never want to pass away and have my kids feel the burden of having their last words be to me spoken out of, you know, anger either. And I think that that's something that's always in the, it, I at least it's in the back of my mind always, you know, especially like times when I get into arguments with my husband, you know, I never ever want my last words to be to someone I care about, um, words spoken out of anger or hatred or just, lashing out because you're having a bad day, you know, um, and for Keila, you know, she felt very disappointed with her mother. Her mother, you know, kept promising her things, you know, like, yeah, we'll go to the beach, we'll collect sea glass, which, um, our mermaid tears, but, you know, it never happened. Uh, her mother just got caught up in work, and so the last words she said to her were, I hate you, and then it was raining that night, cliffside, her mom was driving, car slipped, you know, dead on impact. Um, and it haunts Keila. It haunts her so much that she's kind of let the grief surround her. She's let the grief build this wall between her and her best friend, her and her father, her and her community. Everyone says, you know, and it's a really small, tight-knit community. And she's let the grief and guilt build up to the point where now there's this wall between her and other people and she doesn't know how to fix it. Um, a part of her doesn't want to fix it because she's like, you don't understand what I'm going through. You know, you, you just don't get it. So you feel for Keila. So this is very much a story about grief and not overcoming grief, but learning to deal with grief in a healthy kind of way and isolating yourself isn't you know it's not healthy to do that um and that's what I thought was really profound with this story you know it really did resonate with me as I've said you know I guess you can already imagine it did resonate with me as I was talking about you know how it it's it still sits with me you know um 
and I think it's a good way for young readers to learn to cope, you know, with the loss of a loved one. You know, you don't you don't really know how to talk to children about death. Um, I think as parents, we always just kind of want to shield our kids from the harshness and of reality, you know, of all these tough subjects like death. But you know what? Death is a part of life. And I don't think we should sugarcoat it for our kids. You know, we should discuss it with them in healthy ways. I think that that's what this story does, especially when you follow Ophidia. She's the mermaid. She's had decades to stew in her grief. Um, her grief led to anger. She felt betrayed. Um, and then someone dear to her, you know, lost their life. And she was so blinded by her anger that she didn't really get to grieve properly. You know, the loss of this person. So she's still very very angry. So you're seeing the different ways grief can affect someone. In both ways, both of these characters have isolated themselves from their communities. Ophidia from her mermaid community, um, and then Kila from her community. So you're seeing how grief forced these two characters to isolate, and how once they learn to handle their grief, they welcome in a family. Ophidia gets a new mermaid, um, companion with her to live out her days in the sea and Keela learns to reconnect with you know her community her best friend her, even her father so it's just kind of wonderful to see the development of how these two characters um were first impacted by their grief and how they learned to overcome it and welcome back that sense of community that they've been losing you know Another thing I also loved was she's a strong string fellow. She really does this, like this opening. I say crick, you say crack. Crick, crack. This is a story. And she does this a lot. This is um, repeated throughout the story um, with Ophidia's story, you know, here again crack this is a story I love that you know that repetition in the story because I really do think it captures the essence of oral storytelling um, oral story storytelling you know it's engaging you're going back and forth with your listeners you know that's what's happening here when I say crick you say crack crick, crack and I loved it you know it's for me it was lyrical um, I thought it really did pay respect to the Caribbean culture um, and honestly I thought it was lovely to see it in play here and it is it happens uh, every time it's Ophidia's story um, it's crick crack crick crack crick crack crick right here another again crick crack this is a story but I think it's great how it's repeated. Crick, crack, this is a story. Because it does, you know, it's, it has a beat to it. It has a beat to it. It's luring you in. You're engulfed in the story of the mermaid. You're learning bits and pieces of her history. What her grief is. Why she's so angry. Um, and you're learning what is so precious about this poem. So, you know what? I really do think it was a very beautiful way to tell the story. What I also liked is the sustainability aspect of the story. It's really subtle. It's, it's you know, just an inkling here and there, but you can definitely see that Stringfellow is highlighting this idea of sustainability. You know, Keila, she makes jewelry from sea glass. You know, things she finds on the sand, uh, but she never touches seashells sea because they could be home to other little creatures that are out there. And I think that that's wonderful that you're seeing this idea of sustainability. You're seeing um, 
a reservation of land that shouldn't be in touch, and yet Keila takes something from this land. Um, you're seeing how they discuss how they, when they go diving, if they find something, um, do they send it to the Ministry of Agri not Ministry of Agriculture, but, you know, the Ministry. How do they keep and take care of their island as a community? You know, how do they keep and take care of the relics that they find, of their beaches, of how they're teaching tourists, because they do get a lot of tourists here, what they teach tourists in order to, to take them diving. It's just like, okay, this is what I teach, you know, people in my diving um, lessons, and it's important because it's not just about your survival, but it's also about respecting the seabed, respecting the ocean, respecting the land. And I do love that this idea of sustainability and respect of nature is really prominent in this story without being really overbearing. Um, it's there. It's there. It's wonderful. And ultimately, I, you know, I enjoyed it. I thought it was very well done. So, you know, it was a good story. I have to give it four out of five stars. Um, so once again, this was A Comb of Wishes by Lisa Stringfellow, four out of five stars. You know, it deals with grief, it has mermaids, and it also discusses sustainability. So I think it's a really powerful story. You know, only 272 pages. It's an easy read for young readers, and it's thoughtful, you know. I love a good debut novel that doesn't feel like a debut novel and is incredibly thoughtful um, as far as the storytelling go. So mark your calendars February 2nd. 2022 so it's next month um definitely put this on your to read list if you are a parent you know i think this is a great read um for kids so uh here we go welcome of wishes if you want to purchase the book please remember to purchase the book from your local bookseller or online book retailer i ask that you support your local bookstores whether they're independently owned or barnes noble and or books a million versus Amazon. If you don't know where to find a bookstore near you, go on bookshop.org. They'll give you a list of independently owned bookstores near you. If there's not one near you, if the closest one is like 16 miles away, purchase on bookshop.org. Select that bookstore as the one you want the money to be sent to because bookshop.org does donate a percentage of all proceeds to a locally owned independently bookstore nearest to you. Also, please remember, Barnes Noble, Books A Million, just because there's that one in your neighborhood doesn't mean you can't shop online. If you're going to shop online anyway, do it in a way that supports your booksellers. Um, if money is really, really tight and your excuse is, oh, well, it's cheaper on Amazon, if you really want to save money, go to your local library. That's all I can say on that note. <laughs> support your local library as well. Um, so on that note, I hope you all continue to support me here by liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. You can also become a supporter on buying me a coffee or by purchasing one of my handmade candles. I've got links to all of that in the description below. Hope you all have a great and wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.